Welcome again, and thanks, Shelby, and thanks the Athens County Library and friends of the library for sponsoring this video series. You can laugh along with your Rebecca and Yoga, just like our old classes used to be. Uh, we are still meeting on uh, Wednesdays at the park, and actually there's a lot of Zumba classes going on outside in the parks, uh, and I believe perhaps at the rec center in Wilberks, I don't know. There's a lot of great things you can do to help your wellness to stay connected with your community, and this is just one more venue you might want, or if it's a rainy, snowy day, uh, you can just ch uh, check into the library website. I believe that's what you said, Shelby, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And you'll look for special programs, or what will be the link? Um, it'll be under Yoga with Rebecca Wood, and it'll give you a link to YouTube where you can watch the videos. Okay, there you go. And uh, please join in, join in with a few friends, and the most important thing is to be safe and mindful. Learn how to laugh at yourself just a little bit, because it's all just about being in your own body, being a little more flexible, flexible in your body, flexible in your dealings with other people and life and the drama traumas that come along. So we're going to do a few more standing poses. We demonstrated wall stretch with a chair. Uh, and I think some of the chair poses are phenomenal. Uh, and we're also going to look at wall stretch on the wall. Uh, you can do wall stretch on a nice table or counter at home as well, but please make sure it's stable. A lot of your center island counters um, are slippery, or your tile floor might be slippery, or they're on wheels, and woo, there you go across the kitchen floor. Not a good idea. So we're going to, again, try to find our 90 degree angle. And if you don't have a person to help you with it, it's an odd thing. We're looking at where our body is in space, our proprioceptive ability. And then we're going to check in even closer our interoception ability. How does our body feel in these various positions? And that can tell you a lot about your uh, posture, about your wellness, about your breath, how you're breathing, how you're feeling. Reduce your stress and blood pressure. So where your body is in space and how your body feels in space. Uh, and wall stretch is a nice way to get in touch. So here's where the chair rail works for some people if they're a little shorter, but we want the hands about shoulder height. And again, I have wrist issues, so if you need to use fists, that's just fine. Feet about hip width apart. Reach through those arms and roll the arms internally, if you can. This is hard for people with wrist issues this way. You can use fingertips as well. Come up and down a few times on the toes, so you're creating some balance and stretching of the hamstrings. Remember, if it's really hard for you to open the backs of the knees, um, just soften the knees, that's fine. But engage the muscles all the way up and you're still rolling those hips gently out. So the quads are coming up. But if you have a tendency to hyperextend, again, soften those knees. We don't want that action. So we're pushing away from the wall, we're lengthening our spine, our little tailbone out there. Reaching, reaching, reaching away. You're trying to lengthen this space. You can pull the belly up, button up and in. Arch through a few cat and cow. Chin can come down when you're doing cat. And neutral for cow. And then you're just going to gently step up the wall. Hands come to about shoulder height. Toes are close to the wall. Some folks even like their toes curled onto the wall. Try to keep the hips parallel. You're not cocking one hip up. And just begin to descend the front knee towards the wall. It's a big stretch for the back leg. You can slide it longer for a bigger ankle flexion and a bigger stretch. Engage the foot in the floor. 
So again, we don't want this slipping of the hip. We want to keep them as parallel as possible. Shoulder blades down the back. And then if you want, you can do a little balancing, stretching of the plantar fascia. And slide back into wall stretch. Adjust. And walk the hands up and come to the other side. What does asana mean? Taking a pose with ease. So you're going to find your ease in the pose as you explore the pose. Coming down with the knee towards, keeping those hips parallel. So trying to keep some action here. Good. And one last time. Some nice cat cows. And you can even roll all the way up as you step up. We're going to do a few wall stretches for the pecs. Opening the chest and drawing the scapulas down the back to strengthen the rhomboids, the erector spinae, um, some of those back muscles that either get overworked or too tight and you can't find them. In fact, when we end today in our Shavasana, we're going to use our gold mat for a thoracic opening. And you'll have to find the right height for you, but I think you will like it. So the first position, kind of like ballet, is you place a hand on the wall slightly above shoulder height, and you have to find your stance away from the wall that works with your arm length. Soft elbow, but you're trying to push the wall away. So you're active, and you're in a somewhat active Tadasana here. A couple breaths, and then you're going to barber pull spiral around the axis of the torso as I'm pushing the wall away and dropping the scapula in and down the back. Don't overdo it. Keep spinning. The feet are moving around. And you'll begin to feel all of this muscles. You can even latch on here and do some gentle squeezing, massaging. You can do some gentle, ooh, trigger point relief. <laughs> Found one. <laughs> we all have them. They, they are various places every day. And you don't ever want to over push, but just two fingers and a nice gentle circular massage. This is also the lymphatic drainage area here and here. And so be cautious of this. There might be some gilly gilly icky stuff in there. But a lot of congestion can happen in this area. And it's your body, so massage it. <laughs> Explore it, enjoy it, massage it. You can even stretch that fascia gently. To come out, lift and walk back slowly. Shake the arm out. Place the arm behind you, and I'll switch to this side. And we'll just do one side at a time so that we can move on to other poses. But do each side, perhaps do each side twice. Or perhaps if you have one side's tighter, start with that side, do the other, and then come back to the first. Uh, so fingertips are going to be pointing away. I'm standing tall. My mountain somewhat stance. My core is engaged. I'm reaching to the floor. I'm reaching to the heavens. I'm pushing the earth away, the wall away. Uh, so it's going to be different action on the shoulder. Now again, you have shoulder replacements, you have rotator cuff issues, be mindful. <laughs> Number one, if it hurts, don't do it. If it feels good and a little, oh, exciting, back off a little bit and just explore it. But most of us can use some opening in the armpit and shoulder area. Uh, next week we'll look at using the ball a little bit more and we'll find some pretty significant fascia trigger points or fascia restrictions and cross links and we'll figure out ways to get rid of them. 
This is quite a stretch. Breathing. Focusing. Again, you can combine different sections of the pectoris muscle, the shoulder, up underneath the clavicle, the marma points coming down, the sternum. You'll find them. Just massage them. And then gently unspiral. We don't want to come out of any pose too quickly. Woo! That feels good. The last one is we're going to just reach way far away. And that may be enough of a stretch right there. First one here, second one parallel to the waist, third one kind of stretching out at a Y and begin to spin towards the center. It, it's all just slightly different uh, fascia stretches for the different uh, muscles and the fascia covering the different muscles. This feels good and it also feels quite, oh, like I need to do this more. <laughs> good. To come out, just walk to the wall, release, and just let the arms hang for a minute. If you don't do one side fully at a time and then the other, you'll all of a sudden it's like, oh, one side is longer than the other. But this feels quite luscious and quite nice, and with a few external rotations and just some shaking, some rebounding. We talked about rebounding before. Well, you can get certified in shaking yoga, I guess. I don't know. I heard that. This just creates a little chaos in the body system, the nervous system. It's actually pretty rhythmic and calming as well. And then when you find homostasis, it's like, oh, everything's rewired. You just feel more connected. Excellent. So those are some nice ways to open the armpits. We'll do one on the ground in a future time. A little more strenuous, but it feels pretty good. Uh, and I think you'll have success with it. We're going to do use the wall for our, our feedback mechanism again and for some gentle resistance. And resistance is one of those words that it could be negative. It's antibiotic resistant. Uh, or resistance is futile. But if we have good resistance and good resiliency, we're actually a lot healthier people. So we're going to use the wall as some resistance and a feedback loop to tell us where we are in space and how our body's feeling. So we're going to do two poses. We did half moon uh, with the chair, um, Ardra uh, Chindrasana. And so we're going to use the wall and our blocks to help us with that. And we're going to start with one foot facing the blocks. We're going to reach up, and I'm going to have to adjust to see where I am, and come down to my blocks. Now, depending on your hip height, you might need to be out a little further from the wall, or your hip size, I should say. And now you've got the wall to help you with your hip height. It's nice because this is not quite my hip height, but I know it needs to be a couple more inches taller than the chair rail. I'm reaching through the forefoot, and you can have the hand on your hip, and if it feels safe, your hand can track up the wall, and your shoulder can reach back towards the wall, and I'm coming back over my front leg to make sure I'm in good alignment. Help me, Shelby, if I'm not, and I'm looking up if I can. This is a big vestibular action. When you're turning your head this much, it's a big balance move. So you can always look forward, or you can look down. I drop the back leg and come out. You can also bend that front leg to come out. Good. Whew. That's a lot of work. I've also already done one other yoga class this morning, so <laughs> I'm stretched out in all ways. So here's a nice, calming, 
Uh, and again, this chair rail isn't exceptional here right now, a little bit better if it's flat, but nice place to hang your hands. <laughs> and I'm just going to rock my pelvis up and down. This is very soothing to the lower back. We do this on the ground as well. And I'm really trying to focus and find the four points of the feet. This also helps tone the core, train this, uh, transfers abdominis, and you can walk them a little further out. Uh, I will let you know this mat is a little old and a little slippery, so if I go sliding away, do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> and show you call 911. No. <laughs> and we're getting down here, so we're working at quads. And you can have chairs here for a little support if you feel like you need that. And yes, I can feel my quads. I can feel my quads quite intensely right now. Pushing the earth away. I'm putting my core on. And it's a lot of good work. To come out of this safely, I'm going to have my hands against the wall, slide my buttocks up the wall, soft knees, and again, depending on you, and your wellness or your blood pressure or heart issues, you can rest here. It's still very comforting and soothing at about the same height as your heart. Or you can reach even further down. And hang. Still feels good to have the knees bent. This is almost like the forward bend in the chair. It's opening the back body. And it feels quite nice. You come out again, hands on a wall, supporting yourself up so you're safe. Excellent. The next standing pose using the wall, I would say it's a little more advanced, but the wall makes it easier. Uh, I don't know why. And I, we do it in class over and over again, and people who cannot do any revolved standing poses are able to do this and have a lot of fun doing it. So we'll see if we have the right uh, adjustments for our blocks. You can even have more blocks if you want. You can have a chair over here if you want. So we're going to stand against the wall. And if you have to adjust or readjust as to how far or close, that's fine. You'll figure it out eventually. And I'm just going to cartwheel down so that my back hand is coming to the blocks. And I can see I need them closer. And then my top hand will come first to my hip. And I can feel this chair rail back here. There it is. Yep, I need to do some practice on this puff. So here's a revolve triangle. Using the wall, my goal is my whole torso unfolds. And my hand snakes up here. And I have a beautiful revolved triangle. And I come back down. And I use the wall to come out. A lovely pose. I'm going to do that on both sides. Or I will walk out of here feeling very odd. <laughs> I haven't done that pose in a long time, shall we? <laughs> and you can tell me, too. Do I need to go one direction or the other? Do I look like my bottom leg, my hip is over my bottom leg? So here we go. It's like cartwheeling. I'm like a windmill. The back arm's swooping around. The front arm is coming out. And you can adjust this block as you need. I'm just going to do the partial one on this side. I'm going to keep this knee a little soft. It's had enough yoga for one morning. And it's the torso, the torso you want to roll open. Again, you can look down, you can look out, you can look up. And this arm doesn't want to track up, so I'm not going to have a track up. To so come out, soften the knee, bend the back leg, and come out. This is also a nice one to end with the lower back flat on the wall. Hmm, that feels good. 
finding my breath. Yes, my heart rate is up a little bit. It feels good. I feel more balanced side to side. I can dip down even lower. If you don't work and use these muscles, they're never going to get stronger. Excellent. A little rocking of the pelvis. Mm -hmm. And again, to come out safely, hands on the wall, and then step back. So some nice wall techniques. We're going to come down. And we're going to do one seated pose before we do our final Shavasana. Are we tracking on the video okay? Mm -hmm. We got yeah. about 20 minutes. 20 more? Oh, oh. we're at 20 minutes. Yep. I was going to say, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> 20 more. A long Shavasana, please. <laughs> uh, good. So we're going to come to the center of our mat. Going to do a couple um, kneeling balance poses. Uh, I think we went over a few of these poses. Virasana, this is easy Virasana hero pose. Full Virasana, and you might need a block or a rolled mat to sit down on. Feet come apart. You can have your block here to sit on. And you sit down in between the thighs. Toes facing backwards. And this is kind of a nice pose here because you can really massage the backs of the feet. And you can really work on that fascia. It's nice to see our library open again. If you have tender feet or high arches, you can always put a little rolled uh, hand towel uh, or washcloth underneath the ankles. This really helps stretch the quads. Uh, the full pose, you roll these calves out and sit down on the and it's more comfortable than it looks. <laughs> if you have knee replacements, ask your physician first. Honestly, it strengthens the knees. And here's another way you can do it to create more space in the knee. And a lot of times our knee issues are unbalanced fascia, unbalanced tendons, ligaments, or perhaps they're just worn out. But by creating more space, and you can put one or two, and you can even have an extra mat on the ground. I'm creating a hammock, and I'm sitting down between. And that extra inch gives more space for the knee to unfold, to hinge around. This feels quite nice. It doesn't feel nice on my arches, because I have eye arches. And to accommodate for that, and I'm always preaching self-care, so let's look at what that would look like. Easy to preach something and not do it. So I'm going to have a mat, a folded blanket on the ground. This time I'm going to have the edge here. And this may be enough. I might even need it higher. I'll use this as my hammock, because I don't have my blanket close. But I create a space for my ankles to hang over. And that's just so much better. So why didn't I do it before? Because we got in a hurry. And we get in a hurry in life, don't we? So we want to stop, observe. How does my body feel in this position? And what can I do to accommodate it so that I can do what I need to do? This is just 90% better. Why not strive for 110%? So I can sit in Varasana, do my breath work, my meditation. And again, every pose isn't for everybody. One of my favorite poses, nope, we'll save that for another day. Because we got to move on to these other two. I get easily distracted when I get on a roll with certain poses. So we can keep our blanket here for our knees. And we're going to do a nice vestibular balance action. 
Uh, and it's also very good for the multifidus muscles along the spinous processes. These tiny little muscles, they get lazy. And if they get lazy, then all the big muscles overwork. Uh, and it's called bird dog. It's kind of a funny pose. So you're going to do opposite sides, opposite leg, and opposite arm. And this is a good strengthening action. I'm going to do the other side, because what we don't want is a hip up. We want them as square as they can be. So that hip action on half moon, half moon is rising. Here the half moon is down. We want this flat as we can be, and you're reaching through the ball of the foot. The head is an extension of the spine. It's not hanging down or looking up, hyperextended, extended. You can bend to 90 and stretch. Bend to 90 and stretch. Bend to 90 and stretch. Come down. One or two cat cows. And the opposite side. Again, try to keep the hips parallel. So here's what activates the multifidus muscles. There is a book called The Multifidus Spine. <sighs> Take a little break here. In a child's pose, you can use a block for the forehead. You can have the hands in folded leaf. Or you can even do a version of down dog, which is called puppy, which opens the armpits again and takes some of the pressure off of quads if you have tight quads. It gives you that same uh, neural stimulation and relaxation. The la oh, the part of this that really enhances the vestibular system is you close your eyes now in bird dog. So <laughs> it's pretty funny when you give the wrong cue and it's like right hand, right leg up, and then you fall over. So it's opposite sides. Now close your eyes. Sounds simple, it is not. But the more we practice balance in our lives, whoop, keep that leg up, the more we create balance in our lives. So I'm going to make a nice, cushy base for Shavasana here. And for my Shavasana right now, I'm going to start with this roll, and I'm going to lessen it a little bit. Most folks won't need quite that much, but I want to roll. I don't want a flat mat. This is probably going to unroll. Come around. And I want this roll to be right, right above the tips of the scapulas. And come down with some core control. That's about the spot. Scooch you down. That's close. You can adjust. The arms are going to go over the shoulders. So they're going to be in happy cactus. Some folks will need a support for their head because it'll be too much of a drop back for them. It's actually not too much of a drop back for me. It feels good. Maybe that much would be even better. You can always have your knees together, feet apart. But you can see that this is opening my chest. It's quite lovely. With the head support, it doesn't open the chest as much, but it allows this expansion. A little vulnerable. It's always fine to bring the hands to the ribs. Breathe into the ribs. the hands to the sides and bring breathe into the side body. But just breathe. Trust that your heart can be open, that you can be safe. Having your feet against the wall 
if I was going out perpendicular to the wall, it's just another feedback mechanism that feels very good to this. When the feet fall out to the sides, it's closing the sacrum. So if you have sacral issues, internal rotation opens the sacrum and makes the lower back feel just a little better. I was going to hit my chime, but I'm just going to rest here and enjoy my breath work. And I will encourage you to join us next week or next video segment or pick out your few that you feel really happy with starting next week. And make sure you save some time to be on your mat every day for at least 15 or 20 minutes. Bring a friend. And I'm just going to lay here and say, Namaste.